thank you, thank you. I have some great news to report and a confession to make. Let's start with the great news first. Back in January, I turned 40. Okay. No, that's not the great news. Okay. <laughs> I was a little upset about that. <laughs> but me and my boyfriend, we wanted to, to celebrate. And so w there was this restaurant way up in the high, high in the mountains of Colorado where, where we live. It's called the Tennessee Pass Cookhouse. Now, has anybody been there? Has anybody heard of it? You've been there? Yeah, so you know. So you can only drive to within, what, two miles of the restaurant. After that, you have to ski or snowshoe in. So, and it's at 11,000 feet. It is not a joke to get there. Like, you're working hard. And so, about 5 o'clock, we pulled up to the trailhead, we strapped on our skis, and we went right as the, as the sun was setting. And as the moon came out, we noticed this clear, clear night, and the moonlight was starting to reflect off the freshly fallen snow. It was beautiful, and that distracted us from how hard we were working to get there. And when we arrived, we found this beautiful, warm, cozy yurt. It's like a permanent tent. That's what a yurt is. Candles on the table and amazing food. Halfway through our appetizer, my boyfriend Matt starts, he, he does one of these things where he proclaims his love every so often, and it, it goes on for a while. And he, um, <laughs> and so I wasn't really paying full attention, and then he said, and then he said, we make a great team, and I want to be on that team for the rest of my life. Pulls out a ring, comes around to the side of the table, gets down on one knee, and asks me to marry him. And I said, yes. See, I got the ring. <laughs> Yay. See, there we are. My bliss lasted three days until I got home and started checking into wedding venues. Between all the different rules and regulations at all the different venues and the prices at all of them, I, I got to confess to some behavior I'm not proud of. All we wanted was a simple mountain wedding. But I started to melt down a little bit. If you hear reports of it, they're true. <laughs> and, and it got so bad that I had to be reminded that the ring had a 90-day return policy on it. <laughs> Oops. And I think at my least proud moment, I just said, you know what, I'm going to schedule this at a 7-Eleven on a Tuesday morning, no crazy venue fees, and there'll be snacks for everyone. It'll be great. <laughs> See, what I was faced with was people that I felt only treated me as a date on their calendar. And what I wanted was someone who cared about me and my experience and my wallet and my sanity. So my goal today is to help the industry take a big step in that direction. And it starts with you. And I got to tell you, it wasn't until one of you that I met here last year stepped forward to connect me with the right people that I found that kind of experience that I wanted to have. So thank you, you all are true pros, and let's just make the experience for your brides better so no one ever has to go through, through this again, and especially an unsuspecting groom. <laughs> so wouldn't it be neat if you could create a situation where people were always open and comfortable and receptive to you and your message, and you could persuade them if you needed to? Like, that'd be worth having, wouldn't it? Because most of the time right now, what you do is say whatever you say and do whatever you do and just hope that the message comes across exactly as you intended. And that's a big risk to take. Because you may, and you probably do, run into folks like me who go, you know what? I don't like them. They didn't work. And that's an expensive problem to have and, a, and also a problem that you'll never fully get the breadth of, because you don't know why they don't call you back. So wouldn't it be great to start to make that kind of connection automatic, where you always have an easy flow and you could persuade them if you needed to? Absolutely. And you're going to be able to do that by the time you walk out of here. So the key to it is creating deep, 
unconscious rapport with anyone that you meet, whether it's in person or on the phone. So what is rapport anyway? What is rapport to you? Yell it out. Let's hear what you got. Common ground. Yeah. What else? Connection. Good. Two connections over here. Anybody over here? A relationship. Yeah. Rapport is all those things. And it boils down to one thing. It's a feeling and you've all felt it. You ever walked into a room like this? or a conference, uh, networking, or a cocktail party, like, like maybe I heard there was a good party last night. And yeah, <laughs> and just seeing someone across the room and said, I need to meet that guy. And you don't know why. But then when you do, you just have this great connection. There's always something to, to talk about. You kind of can't wait to see him again. You ever have that, that kind of feeling? Just a couple of you in the back, that's it? <laughs> okay, yeah, of course you have. Yeah. Now, you've also all felt lack of rapport. You know what I'm talking about? Where you miss each other like ships in the night. You just want to stop talking and go home, right? <laughs> like, like that kind of, yeah, you've all, you're laughing because it's happened to you, right? Or worse yet, you see them coming and you're like, all right, I'm out, I gotta go, right? <laughs> yeah. So let's just say you could create this kind of feeling with anyone you wanted at any time. How would you use it? Of course you would sell more. Like for sure you would sell more. Because people want to do business with people they like. But how else would you use it? Networking. Networking? Absolutely. What else? Relationships? Yeah, like at home? Yeah, you bet. What else? Wait, say that again? Oh, learn something from others? Absolutely. So. You can do all those things, and, and those are all good, but let's face it, all your answers are a little bit boring, a little bit boring. So how could you have a little more fun with this? And this is what I want you to ask yourself as we're moving forward today is how am I going to use this, how am I going to use this, how am I going to use this, right? What if you could get that sale price on that pair of shoes today when the sale doesn't start till tomorrow? Ooh, guys, it works the same with big screen TVs. <laughs> Yeah. What if you could talk your way out of a traffic ticket when you get pulled over? I got a system works great. If we have time, I will teach you how to do it. Yeah. What if uh, you could get a first class upgrade when you go to the airport to go home tonight or tomorrow? Yeah. Ooh, that's excited some of you. <laughs> or if you felt really gutsy one night, you could just talk your way into a presidential party that you weren't invited to, like some folks did a couple years ago. Right. So the possibilities for what we're going to learn are endless. Okay. So get creative and I want to know what you end up doing. So to do this, we got to learn a couple things first. You got to understand the framework. And the framework is that you are always communicating. You are never not communicating. We think communication is just the words that come out of our mouth, but actually studies show that our physiology, our tonality, and our words combine into our communication and the meaning of what we're trying to convey. And studies also show that your physiology or your body language is much, much more than your words for what you say. Now, this is for emotionally based conversations. By this, I'm not suggesting that you could go to Italy and sit in a chemistry class in college and understand all of it because you get the tonality, right, or the body language. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying, for most communication that's short and non-technical in nature, our body language is super important. Way more important than we think. And our tonality is important too. And now, how many of you have heard this? It's not what you said, it's how you said it. Now, how many of you have been on the losing end of that one? Yeah, sure you have. My fiance has. <laughs> yeah. So these are some things that we can start to pay attention to so you can do differently to get a different result, which, you know, for, for purposes of this conference, is a client or potential client that loves you, but maybe they don't know why. Okay? So let's talk about physiology. Posture, gesture, facial expression, and breathing. Posture, gesture, facial expression, and breathing. All of these are things that have been on automatic pilot for probably your whole life. And you can actually start to shift them and pay attention 
to what you're doing so that you can get a different response out of whoever's across from you. Okay? Uh, your tonality is your tone and your tempo and your pitch. Tone, tempo, and pitch. And your words are your predicates and your keywords and your content chunks. And all of these are things that you can do, like I said, differently to reach people across from you, to create that connection and that spark from them. Okay? So yes, you have to pay attention to a lot of things. We're going to boil it down today mostly to physiology. We might get a little bit into tonality. But I, wanna wa I want you to walk out of here with an experience of using it. Okay? So is anyone curious how we're going to do this? Like how is this really going to happen? Anybody? A few of you? Okay, good. Excellent. So actually, physiologically, matching and or mirroring whoever's across from you will create this kind of connection. And matching and mirroring are really two very different things. You're going to create a different physiological response from who, whoever is across from you. So let's talk about this. Mirroring. Now here's uh, Bush and Putin here. Good friends, I'm sure. <laughs> but notice how, if they faced each other, they would look like they were looking in a mirror with the way they're holding their, their coach. You see that? Yeah. And it's pretty different than matching, which is making yourself look like a non-mirror image. Okay? And like I said, these create two very different physiological responses that we're going to talk about. But who wants to come up and help me demo these? Who wants to come up? Volunteer. You want to come up over here? Come on up. Tell me your name. Denise. Denise. Big hand for Denise. She's very brave. Come on up. Come on up. Run up here, Denise. Run, 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 run. Where are you from, Denise? California. California. So she's pretty close to home. All right. Now, I talked to Denise a little bit earlier today. So go ahead. Stand and face me. So if I was going to match Denise, so put your hand on your head like that. Just do that. Don't move. Stay right there. Now, do you do this very much? No. No. This is for purposes of demonstration only, okay? So if I'm going to match Denise, making myself like a non-mirror image, what am I going to do? I'm going to put this hand on my head. Now, all the while, we're creating vibes between me and Denise, okay? That's just what we're doing. It's, it's, it, it, we're all waves in the same ocean. We're connected by vibes and energy and all that good stuff. So if I'm going to notice how it feels, because it feels however it feels, right? And you're on the hot seat right now, and you're doing great. Thanks. Yeah. So if I'm going to mirror Denise, what am I going to do? Stay there. Don't move. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> you see how it feels different between us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Strangely different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So hands down. Everybody get that? Okay. So uh, lean on one hip for me. Sass it up. Own it. There you go. Oh, look at that. Wow. <laughs> No one's ever done that. Okay, so I gotta try to match that. I don't know how. <laughs> I gotta pop it a little? Okay, wait, you're, you're leaning that way? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so she's leaning that way. If I'm gonna match her, what am I gonna do? Lean this way. And see, she's got one foot behind the other, so I think I'm, I do not have the soul that Denise does. <laughs> but I can only try. I'm just a white girl. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you see now. Now, if I shift to do to make ourselves like look like we're in a mirror, see, it feels different. Yeah. Yeah. It feels different. This confuses you, I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. Now, yeah, it gets a little more intense. Yeah. Okay. Straighten up. So, uh, cross your arms. Okay. Wow. You had soul doing that too. Oh my goodness. All right. So you've got your left over right. So if I'm going to match her, what am I going to do? Actually, that would be mirroring. If I did right over left, you see how we look like we're in a mirror here? Show them. Okay, see like that? Now she faces me, and we look like we're looking in a mirror, and we do look good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now, if I'm going to match her, I'm, see, she's got one hand under, let's see, so I need to go like this. See, it's a little hard. There we go. I think I got it. No, you're not supposed to know. I'm, I'm supposed to know. <laughs> All right. So you see how now we look more like a non-mirror image. See how our arms are crossed just a little different, then we face each other. Yeah. And we look good. We're creating vibes all the time. Everybody get that? Yeah. Okay. So for coming up here, you're going to get a copy of my Body Language for Profits system, two books, and a DVD, and a 21-day body language makeover. Woo! Here you go. You. Very good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So that is the, oh, careful. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's the difference between matching and mirroring, okay? 
So you want to pay attention to this. This is really important. Okay? Write it really big and red if you have that ability right now. Matching, you want to use 99% of the time. Mirroring, you want to use the other 1%. Here's why. Mirroring, as Denise will probably tell you, is more intense. It creates a more intense connection in you and the person you're talking to. Now, the, the, it, the problem is it can be so intense that for people that are very sensitive, it can backfire. Okay? You can actually almost start to weird them out a bit because they haven't felt that kind of connection with folks before. Okay, so you want to use matching 99% of the time. And the reason I say 99% is because when you're doing things symmetrically, when someone is doing things symmetrically, right, right side is doing what the left side is doing, you don't have a choice but to mirror. But here's the thing. We're so sloppy in our body language that you're just not going to have that opportunity very much. Like, has anybody seen uh, Forrest Gump? You seen that show? Yeah. It was on TV the other day, and you know how he looks stiff and kind of awkward all the time? If you watch it, next time you watch it, because everyone's going to see it again, probably, he's symmetrical most of the time, which makes him look stiff and funny and unusual and uncomfortable. Okay? So matching is going to be really easy to pull off 99% of the time. So do we have any questions on that? Just real quick, questions? Everybody get it? You get the concept? See, what we're doing, okay, one, one second here, and then I'll answer your question. What we're doing is playing adult copycat. Okay? This is actually how cultures are built. This is something that's deeply unconscious in all of us that you can bring to the conscious level to use so that you can create a better connection with anyone. Okay? Uh, question in the teal or, or light blue? Yeah. Okay, she, she said she works at a bakery, you do one-on-one -on -one consultations with wedding cakes, and you think mirroring would make people more uncomfortable. Right, that's exactly what I said. It's not uncomfortable, it's more intense. So are you concerned about uh, that people are going to think you're doing what they're doing and they're going to catch you? Is that the gist of it? Oh, oh, you think, it, okay, yes. So your question based on, she, she's worried about that you're going to be acting. Right? Yeah. And you are. Okay? So, <laughs> fair question. Now, here, here's the thing. We're not, at first it's going to feel like acting, because we're going to jump in and we're going to do this before you leave here. Okay? It's not about acting. It's about increasing your behavioral flexibility. That's the number of ways that you are comfortable in communicating. Okay? Because most of us, like I said, do whatever you do, say whatever you say, and hope that the message comes across just right. If all you have to do is match and or mirror someone to make a huge sale, are you willing to do it? It's easy. It's free. Okay? It's free. The worst thing you can do is do everything that people are telling you here, like AdWords, and I've seen all the, all the um, uh, presentations here, and then get them in front of you and lose them because they don't like you. Because there's something that they can't put their finger on that they just don't like. Wow. Uh, there was a question over here. Yeah. Is there an example where you can use sales that 1% mirror? An example in sales. Well, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, here's, here's the example. You get a husband, uh, bride and groom come in. Now, what do you do? I, I'm a caterer. You're a caterer. Okay. Uh, so the question was, is there an example where you would use mirroring, right? That What is that 1% of the time? That's the question, right? So you're a caterer, and... Um, you get a bride and groom come in. Bride and groom uh, and two moms. Okay? That's what me and Matt did recently. Okay? So they have a lot of people they got to impress. Let's say uh, you've talked to the bride and she's in. But then the rest of her posse shows up and one of them is not so in. Right? And they're being very symmetrical. That's the person that you mirror until you grab them, right? And you get them on, on your page. Because literally what we're doing is we're stepping over into someone else's playbook and we're saying, hey, I'm just like you. And it's deeply unconscious. It's really deeply unconscious. And you do what they do for about five to maybe, it, it can be anywhere from a minute to like five minutes, right? Until you create that connection. And then what will happen is they'll actually start following you. 
they'll start doing what you're doing. Where the body goes, the mind's going to follow. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's jump in so you can have an experience of it. How about that? Does this sound good? Yes, it does. Okay, that's good. Remember, the goal is to create a situation where they go, she's just like me or he's just like me. People love people like them, right? Like um, wedding planners hang out together, right? Y'all like each other. You ever notice how, how CEOs kind of hang out together, right? Moms with kids, you see them. It's like the armada coming down the mall, right, with the strollers. Yeah, because you have that commonality. You never see a CEO whose best friend is a homeless guy. You don't see it. There's not enough commonality. So you're, you're creating that with your body language. And people love to buy from people like them. People do favors for people like them. People give discounts to people like them. People pay more to people like them. I actually, uh, I, I trained a car dealer in this, in, in Denver, a Honda dealer. And Honda actually did a study that I found out when I went in. Of the people that walked onto the car lot, of a Honda lot with a pocket full of money ready to buy a car. 60% of them that left without buying, of the people that left, 60% left because they didn't like their salesperson. That's an expensive problem to have. And you never know, because you're probably not doing exit interviews, I'm guessing, <laughs> in your businesses, right? How much of that's happening to you, okay? But you, can, you don't have to have it be that way. All you have to do is be flexible in your communication, okay? So, let's jump in. Actually, I took out my, uh, my slide. Here's what we're gonna do. One of you is gonna be A, you're gonna get a buddy. Get someone you don't know. This is a perfect time to meet people, okay? One of you is gonna be A, the other one's gonna be B, okay? A is gonna tell a story. Doesn't matter what the story is. Hang on a minute, don't talk yet, not yet. It's not, not now, okay? <laughs> A is going to tell a story. B is going to follow with matching and or mirroring. Which one? Matching. matching. Very good. Now, there's a caveat here. When you address people, you want to use a 45 degree angle, right? Because we want to diffuse any conflict. We want to diffuse any conflict. So when we face people straight on, somewhere in us, deep down inside, and somewhere in them, we're creating conflict. So who wants to come up and help me demo that? Do we have any volunteers? You want to come up? Come on, run up. What's your name? Trisha. Trisha. Come on up, Trisha. Everybody give her a hand. She's very brave. Come on up. <laughs> Hustle, Trisha. Let's go. Now, where are you from? Lake Arrowhead. Lake Arrowhead. What state is that? What? What's California. California. Okay. So most of the time, Trisha, hi. Thanks for coming up. Go ahead and face me. So most of the time, if we were at a networking event, like have your drink. In your hand. There you go. Is it, you hold your drink like this? No. no, you hold your drink like this. Yeah, yeah. And you got your plate? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So most of the time, if, if we were going to meet each other, we'd face each other square off. Right? Show, look them in the eye. Show them that you mean business. Okay. Here's the deal. That's creating conflict. Okay. So stay where you are. All you have to do to alleviate that is just use a 45 degree angle. You see how it feels different? Just, you just, you just stay. Don't worry. Yeah, it's a little different. It's a little more open, a little more flow can happen here, okay? So no matter whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, you can use a 45 degree angle of address with anyone. Sound good? Okay, big hand for Trisha. Don't you leave. Oh, wait. In the eye. That's yeah, we'll get to that. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah, okay. we're just talking about the angle. Now, a uh, big hand. Don't, don't short her on her applause. Okay. And you're going to get... A body language for profit system. Here you go. Take that. Yeah. So, yeah, clap for that because it's really good. <laughs> so, 45 degree angle of address. You can set up your office this way, like in your cake consultations. Don't sit square across. Like, do at least a 45 to 90 degree angle. Okay. Uh, anytime you're standing, you can address someone this way. Chairs all have swivels. Okay, and you can do that. You want to create a nice open flow. So one of you is going to be A, the other one's going to be B. A is going to tell a story about how you got here today, what you did last Christmas, what your next vacation is, doesn't matter. Just start talking. B is going to follow you with matching and or mirroring. Now, if, if they scratch their head, B, what are you going to do? 
You're going to wait five or ten seconds and scratch your head. It's sly, okay? If they scratch their head and you're like, oh my god, right? They're, they're going to think you're crazy, okay? So if they shift in their seat and cross and uncross their legs, you wait a little bit. Shift in your seat, cross and uncross your legs, okay? Now, if they talk with their hands and it's your turn to be quiet, don't go, <laughs> don't go like this, okay? They're going to really think you're nuts then. You wait till it's your turn and use their movements. Just start a conversation, just back and forth. I'm going to give you three minutes and then we're going to switch, okay? So one of you is going to be A, other one's going to be B, then we're going to switch. And there's going to be questions. I'm going to come around. Ready? Go. Okay, go ahead and switch, go ahead and switch. A becomes B, B becomes A, go ahead and switch. A becomes B and B becomes A, you got three minutes.
wrap up your conversation. Start to wrap it up. Exercise is over. Now, do you see how when people get in rapport, they don't want to stop talking? <laughs> Thank you. I need to take you with me everywhere. Yeah, so do you see that? Now, how, how many of you, how many of you felt a deeper connection than average for a first conversation that you had with, with folks? Yeah, like a lot of you, okay? Now, how many of you felt like it was, it was kind of hard? Did anybody feel like it was kind of hard to do? Yeah, so here's, here, let me tell you about that. It gets easier. We did it for six minutes. That's it. I've been doing this for 15 years now, okay? And... Actually, after about, if, if you get out of here and you give yourself two more six-minute sessions, you'll have it, okay? Now, and in my longer trainings, when I train sales teams and things like that, uh, that's exactly what we do. So, did anyone feel like you were going to get caught? Did anyone feel like you're going to get caught? <laughs> yeah, here's the deal. You're not. You are not going to get caught. I've been caught twice in that 15 years, both in sales presentations to companies where I was going to train their team, and they say, you're doing it right now. I said, of course I am. <laughs> this is how I roll, okay? <laughs> yeah. Now, um, did anyone feel like, oh, well, let me back up on that. People are paying so much attention to themselves, they are not paying attention to you. And what we're doing is training you to get out of that cycle so you can actually connect with people the way they need it and create that spark. That spark that maybe nobody has ever done for them in their whole life. Okay? Now, uh, did anyone feel like you were watching them so close that you couldn't hear what they were saying? Anyone feel like that? <laughs> right. That means you're right on track. Okay? It really does. It's hard to do it first, and that, that, that feeling will dissipate, okay? That, that feeling will, will go away quickly once you get better at this, okay? I'm not going to tell you that it's, it's the easiest thing to learn, but I am going to tell you after about 15 minutes of trying, it gets a whole hell of a lot easier to do, and it can make the difference between you getting the sale or you getting your way or not, okay? So other questions? A couple, any questions out here? Front row, yes. How closely do you have to match someone? My answer to that is how bad do you want what you want? <laughs> okay? So we want to, hang on, I'll get you right in a minute. We want to create, and that, that really is the question. Are you willing to do what it takes to connect with that person so you can get them comfortable and open and receptive to you? Or are you not? And you can just be real straight with yourself, and that's, the answer you get is the answer you get, and I'm not going to judge, but that's how closely you need to match people. Okay, uh, yes. Over the phone. Okay, so, so what did we talk about? Um, your tonality is your tone, your tempo, your pace, your pitch. You can match all that. And I'm going to show you a video on how to do that. Now, the reason, because a lot of you are on the phone a lot. I am too. Now, I love it when I get someone on the phone who has a southern accent <laughs> because... I grew up in Texas, and I can do that. That's right. Is Texas back there? Yeah. Now, I moved out of Texas because it's too hot, but, <laughs> and I wanted to race my bike, but I can connect with those kind of folks, okay, because I can do that accent. You don't catch me trying to do a New York accent. Can't do it, all right? So don't try to match something that you can't really pull off, okay? Uh, one question here, yeah. Right. The posse. Right. So I had that recently. I adored the bride great conversation with the phone, met her in person, and instantly connected. Here comes her BFF. And dance they're like that and then takes about five steps away from the conversation and won't be part of like our Got it. Okay, so here, there's, there's, I, I did a, uh, a training at the Little, Little White Dress uh, wedding shop in Denver. Is anyone here from there? Anyway, I, I trained all their people. Uh, and we did a longer session like this. And this is what I told them to do. I said, when your bride is, is in the dressing room, 
right? And let's just say, you got to get rapport with the posse. Find the leader of the group, and it's pretty easy to do because once you've gotten rapport, see, groups get rapport. They come into your shop or into your establishment in rapport. Okay, maybe they've had some champagne. It's all fun, right? And so uh, when the bride is away, you've got to integrate yourself into that group. And so this is what you do. You future pace them a little bit. Like you find the leader because what will happen is one of them will cross their arms and then the rest of them will cross their arms. Or one of them will say, oh, I've got to go to the bathroom and then the rest of them go to the bathroom. Right? That's the leader of the group. And, and so watch for that, that kind of stuff. When one uncrosses their legs and crosses... The others will do it, right? Because we're all wired to follow each other. That's what we're talking about here, <laughs> okay? Then you say things like, how great is she going to look walking down the aisle in that dress? Right? Sounds simple, but you're actually painting a picture in the posse's mind of the possibilities of the future. Because that's what, that's what we all sell here is possibility, do we not? And then we deliver on it, but you've got to sell with possibility. Won't it be neat, and, and, and I taught this to a, to a venue uh, in, in Boulder where I live. There's two competing venues for, for weddings. They're both nice hotels. One of them won't upgrade their facilities, but they have a killer patio. It is so, it's a creek is there, and the, the bikers come along, and it's green and nice. The other place is on the corner of a big intersection, and trucks come down the canyon, and they have that jake break, you know, that like, and so, so I'm working with the, the, the venue with the creek. And I say, here's what you do. You ask them, hey, hey where, are you, where are you looking? And won't it be nice to have your wedding here when there's just a few walkers and hikers and here in the babbling brook? Because you know there's the Jake break at the other place. How's that going to be when you say I do? <laughs> Not very good, right? So you, here's the thing. When you get rapport and they start to follow you, because they will, and the first time you see it, you've got to be cool, right? Because when you scratch your head like this, and you see someone like on the other side of you do it, like you've got to keep your cool. If you're like, oh my god, it worked, right? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. So um, I lost my train of thought a little bit. But <laughs> point being, people are going to start to follow you. So make sure at that, at that point, you, you have their mind. Okay? Where the mind goes, the body will follow. Where the body goes, the mind will follow. So it works back and forth. So they're open to you. Make sure you're painting a picture of positive outcome. Of positive outcome. Okay? So do you want to see how, the, how, this, how this works, like in a video? you want to see it? Okay. Anybody see The Office? You see that show? Yeah. So let's see if we can uh, get this going here. Just knowing what you know now, just, just watch what happens. I'll be the number two guy here in Scranton in six weeks. How? Name repetition, personality mirroring, and never breaking off a handshake. I'm always thinking one step ahead, like a carpenter that makes stairs. Hello. Ah, you must be Andy Bernard. Aloha and welcome. And you must be Michael Scott. Aloha and hello. <laughs> Oh, very good. Welcome to our little kingdom. Uh, we have a bag of nifty gifties for you. Oh, Michael, thank you for welcoming me to your little kingdom, Mike. Oh. Nifty! They are nifty. They're nifty gifties. You know who I really like? Is this guy, Andy Bernard. He has got <laughs> a very likable way about him. What'd you see? What did he match? Nifty, gifty, aloha, kingdom, uh, and the little bow and the little handshake. Smile. The smile, yeah. And then what was the result? I love that guy. He's just got this way about him. And now, this is, this is, you know, from TV, it really works this way, okay? This is not a, a fabrication. Now, was there a question over here? Did anybody have one? No, just answer the question. Oh, you're going to answer the question. Okay. All right. We'll give you credit. Okay. We'll, we'll give you credit. A uh, question in the back. Yeah, one question.
Okay, so the question was, you've talked to your bride on the phone, she comes to your studio, and you're him in her dress, and how are you going to create rapport that way, basically? Well, right, so you can be more casual. The key is to create that rapport, and you can get it over the phone. You need to reinforce it when you first meet him, because when, when she walks in, you're not going to get, get right down on your knees and start hemming her dress. Like, talk to her for a little bit, right? Set up your office so that you're not squared off. Okay, How, if you have a round table, if you have that kind of uh, flexibility, like, make sure you're using a 90, 45 degree angle so you're not undoing everything you've created on the phone. Okay, now, what about, okay, let me just say something. Shannon gave me permission to go a little bit longer. Is that okay with, with you all? You want to know a little bit more? Okay. I'm not going to go too long. So here's what, here's what I want to cover. I want to cover what to do if someone's angry, and then I want to I wanna uncover a little bit about lie detection. Would that be okay with you guys? Okay. So what, what about rapport when someone's angry? Here's what you do. You got to get rapport with them by being angry. Okay? Yes. Yes, you're acting. Okay, you might not be angry. People are angry because they don't think you get the magnitude of the problem. You need to show them that you do by raising your voice. Here's what you do, though. Remember, because people are going to start to follow you. If they're way up here in their intensity, you swing your intensity about up to here. Get rapport, and then slowly start to bring it down, and they'll follow you. Okay, so let's see how this works. Does anybody watch Bob's Burgers? you see that on Sunday nights? Yeah. If you don't, you really should see it. It's awesome. Now, l let, me, let me set the stage here. Bob, this is Bob, he owns a burger joint. And he's upset because the food trucks have come to his street and they park there and they take his customers away. And his buddy Randy is trying to um, talk him into getting a food truck. So let's see what happens to Bob. And this is a perfect example of, of rapport. Hey. See, Bob, look around. Food trucks are the future. No, they're a trend. Yes, the trend of the future. Well, maybe I'll just get my own food truck, Randy, and park it right out front here. You should. Maybe I will. You seriously should. It's a good idea. Then if it's a good idea, I'm going to do it. Well, I hope that you do because it is a good idea. Well, do you seriously think it's a good idea? Yes, I do. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But then I will do it. All right. I'm glad you took my advice. Well, I'm not mad at you anymore. I'm not mad at you in the first place. Because if you think it's a good idea, I should get a food truck. Bob, I'm just mirroring your energy. Fine. I'm, my point is I'm a cook. I could do it, right? Oh, okay. Yes, I think it's a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> what happened there? Did you see how that worked? Yeah. Randy went up, didn't quite match Bob, and then he took him right back down. And it really will happen that way. It takes guts. It takes guts to do that because you're worried you're going to piss him off more. And, but you're not. You're showing him, hey, I get you. Okay? So, um, now I want to get in a little bit to lie detection. And I told you about the traffic ticket thing. Okay? Here's the deal. We're not going to have time. However, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have for you, what I'll do, if you give me your email, I will send you a video on how to do it. It's worked for hundreds of, of people. And I'm not giving you a free license to speed. Okay, I'm not. But I, I, I want to get you that information. And what I, the way you can get me your email is I have a few of these out back. This is an in-car guide on how to talk your way out of a traffic ticket. It fits right up in your visor right here. <laughs> I designed it just that way, and it has this little tear-off flap. So if you go see Janet at the table, and I'll be out there, and give me your email or a dollar, one or the other, it's a trade, then I will give uh, every single one of these that I have out. I don't have enough for everybody. It really works. Because it's all about persuasion, right? Because you just got to make it less likely for one human being to punish another. That's all you got to do. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Let's talk about lies. Oh, first, let me tell you a little bit. If, if you want the Body Language for Profit system, everybody should have an order form. I have a bunch of them out here, and I don't have enough for everybody again. Uh, and you can go to whatever level you want to participate in. I will help you uh, learn to read body language and really turn it into profits, because that's, that's the key. So take a peek at that. Now, um, let's talk about lies. This is my favorite lie detection technique. Remember, this means yes. And this means no. So if someone says, I would never do that. <laughs> Remember, the body can't lie, right? 
or that is a beautiful baby. <laughs> you'll see it. You'll see it happen. Well, uh, I was at the store the other night because me and Matt, we bought this house. We're remodeling it. We don't have a kitchen right now. And I like those rotisserie chickens, you know, the ones that are under the heat, heat lamps. And he, he's not such a fan, but it was late. We're tired. We're on the kitchen. I'm like, do you want a chicken? He's like, yeah. <laughs> not a big deal, right? Not all lies are materialized. But here's the thing. I actually want to try to create a relationship that, that is, works, right? And if I go, great, let's have the chicken, because he said yes, I know the dude doesn't want the chicken, OK? And so what I said is, OK, look, I get you just lied to me. And because he has to put up with me, OK? And I said, there's a turkey breast right up top with no bones in it. Do you want that? And he's like, yeah, that would be better. Okay, so it could be anything from, yeah, I like that tablecloth, <laughs> right? Or, I don't know, that, that, that last dress was, I don't know if I liked it or not, okay? So you can start to understand people's deep unconscious um, needs, okay? So let's, let's see a video of how this, how this works. So I, I used to race bikes, you all heard that, and um, Lance Armstrong is, I grew up with him, I know the guy, I've known him, for way too long, and um, I've watched this whole thing. So let's let's see what he looks like when he's lying. I have never doped. I've never taken performance enhancing drugs. My best defense is I've never tested positive. Three out of three. Do you see it? You want to see it again? Okay. I have never doped. I've never taken performance enhancing drugs. My best defense is I've never tested positive. Textbook. Textbook, and I, I mean, here's the thing on, on him. We could talk about him for a whole other hour. The only people he had fooled were people outside of the sport, which turns out is a lot of people. Uh, everybody else knew what was going on. It was just what was going on then. He got in trouble because he's a jerk. He just is. And you know, you're not supposed to say that on the stage, but I said it because it's true. And so uh, let's, let's see how he looks when he's telling the truth and see if it looks similar to when he's lying. Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. Did you ever blood dope or use blood transfusions to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. In all seven of your Tour de France victories, did you ever take banned substances or blood dope? Yes. Huh, looks a lot like when he was lying, doesn't it? Yeah, but that's the truth. So let's see another one. Um, now, I don't want to make any political statements here. I'm not going to do that. Okay, so just, just erase that, yeah, just erase it out of your head. Well, all we're looking for is lies. Okay, that's it. And Sarah Palin has to be, she's textbook at it. So um, when she was governor of Alaska, there was a state trooper and she had some problems with hiring and firing. So just based on what you know now, watch and see what the truth is right now and wanting to probe and find out why I did replace this um, cabinet member and it's cool I want them to ask me the questions I don't have anything to hide <laughs> and um, didn't do anything wrong there and it is a governor's prerogative a right to fill that cabinet with members whom she or he believes will um, do best for the people whom we are serving so I look forward to any kind of investigation or questions being asked because got nothing to hide got nothing to hide I look forward to the investigation. <laughs> she, she is great, and you know, I think she's just a train wreck coming down the tracks. Because um, she, she's like this all the time. Okay, so just, it, it's easy to start to detect this. Now, um, you can watch your family and friends. If, if you don't want to stare down the people close to you, uh, watch reality TV or watch the news or talk shows anywhere where people are filmed candidly. If you don't want to do that, see your order form here that, that you have. Actually, on the bottom, there's a there's a uh, thing that says, Trace, just send me videos of famous people lying on TV. And I will, do, I will do that. And I can hear what you're saying in your mind. You're saying, Trace, famous people would never lie on TV. But I'm going to bust your bubble <laughs> on that. And so let's see. I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you very much. I'll see you at the table. I know you have a lot of questions. I want to answer them. Thank you. <laughs>